It's a big day, gang. Hello, welcome once again to Stuff and Things, where I like to talk about stuff and occasionally even things. I'm your good friend Bradley, and today is a pleasant Sunday Stuff and Things. And I have something in my possession, something I've been waiting for for years now. Something that I thought I may never see again. Something very, very exciting, sent to me by a very generous viewer. We're gonna get to that. We're gonna read from Peter Straub's The Throat. We're gonna talk a little bit about upcoming videos. We're going to get to your questions as well in hashtag Ask Stuff and Things. But let's start with a reading from our good friend Peter Straub's The Throat. Peter Straub is a viewer, he is a Patreon supporter, and he is also an award-winning best-selling author, and he is allowing us to read from his book The Throat. We are continuing every week to read a little snippet. Um, it's going to take a while to get through this book, but I think it's worth it. Here we go. We're continuing in chapter three, I believe. <clears throat> My order sent me to Camp White Star, a base in Second Corps located outside of Nha Trang. Okay, we're going to be trying to pronounce the Vietnamese word here. Nha Trang. There I was supposed to join other new members of my regiment for transport north to Camp Crandall in one corps. Uh, one of the unexplained glitches not unusual in army life occurred, and the men I was supposed to join had been sent on ahead of me. I was left awaiting orders for eight days. Every day I reported to a cynical captain named McHugh, Hamilton McHugh, who rubbed his square fingers over his babyish pink cheeks and assigned me to whatever task took his momentary fancy. I moved barrels from beneath the latrine and poured kerosene into them so old Vietnamese women could incinerate our shit. I cannibalized broken down jeeps for distributor caps, alternators, and working fuel pumps. I raked stones out of the 15 square yards of dust in front of the officer's club. Eventually, McHugh decided that I was having an unseemly amount of fun and assigned me to the body squad. The body squad unloaded corpses from the incoming helicopters, transferred them to the morgue while the paperwork was done, and then loaded them into the holds of planes going to, to Tan Song Nut, where they were flown back to the States. The other seven members of the body squad were, were serving out their remaining time in Vietnam. All of them had once been in regular units, and most of them had re-upped so that they could spend another year in the field. They were not ordinary people. The regiment had slam-dunked them into the body squad to get them out of their units. All right, gang, it's, I want to read on by myself, but I don't want to read ahead. So I'm going to continue reading these small little installments. We'll see how long we continue. Most of you seem to be enjoying it thus far. But gang, we have so many things to talk about in this episode. Uh, first of all, is it still here? Where is it? Oh yeah, I just recorded my review of GLP's Temple Bar. Um, it is a very interesting plug and I, I did the initial impressions video last week, and if I remember correctly, I was sort of, I don't know about ambivalent, but kind of like, eh, unsure about this blend. I have now had a full week in which to try it out, and I have, I have some thoughts, and those thoughts will be posting this Wednesday on the channel. So that was first impressions last week, this week, this coming week, on Wednesday, you will be able to see the full review. I'm enjoying a little bit of that in this Castello Shape 55 pot. Um, aside from that, there are some other videos that I wanted to get out, some other things that I wanted to talk about. We're still going to be going with this review of these Lockbee, well, I have the Lockbee journal system, and then I also have the pen sleeve that they sent me. I've been using this Lockbee journal, very similar in configuration to a Midori Traveler's Notebook where you have these elastic bands and these inserts that you can put in. So I've been using this lately uh, to write out my notes for Sunday stuff and things, stuff like that. And one thing I can report right away is that the paper for these inserts is good and it works quite well with fountain pens, at least so far. I've been using, granted I'm using an extra fine uh, Lamy 2000 on this right now, but it's handling that quite well, there's no bleed through or anything. So I'll report more to you, obviously, when I do an actual review about these, about this notebook. Um, but so far, so good. I'm enjoying using this. Uh, I wanted to do some videos on these Moment lenses I have. These are little lenses that you can mount on smartphone cameras. And I have this anamorphic lens, which is sort of for smartphone, smartphone filmmaking, which may seem like a contradiction in terms, but it seemed like something fun to try out. Um, and then I also have a macro lens for photography, mostly. I don't think you would, I can't really see much use of doing this for video. 
but unfortunately, the case I need to allow me to mount these lenses onto my phone, I have the iPhone 11 Pro, it's been pushed back. They had a pre-order for the cases. I think I ordered them right around the time I ordered my phone, or I got maybe it was like late September when I got my phone. Um, I ordered the case that would allow me to mount these lenses on my smartphone. They originally said it would ship in mid-October. Uh, it is now late October and they're not coming until late November now. So there's a whole other month to wait. I'm trying not to be too annoyed or too impatient because I know they're a small company and there are a lot of things that are sort of out of their hands, but it's very frustrating and I want those, I want that case very badly so I can try these lenses. Uh, they also have a telephoto lens, they have a wide angle lens, they have a fisheye lens. I want to try them out. I know that this isn't going to replace a DSLR in terms of quality, but I pretty much only take pictures on my phone anyway. And so it just seems like it would put a whole lot more functionality onto my phone and it would be very fun to experiment with those. So until I get that case, there's not much more I can show you with those lenses, unfortunately. Next, this may seem like an odd topic of discussion and I don't even really know how I got onto this to begin with. I, I went into a weird YouTube rabbit hole. I discovered a device called a one wheel. Have any of you heard of this? And I'm, I'm only mentioning it now because I got in this weird rabbit hole of watching, I think it was through photography channels or filmmaking channels where people, for some reason there was this weird overlap of people who like this one wheel device and people who like like mobile filmmaking. And so I started getting on these videos. It's basically a, an electric skateboardish sort of thing, but it only has one large wheel in the center. It has a motor in the hub of that wheel. And as you stand on the device and turn it on, it sort of balances itself. And then by leaning forward or back, you can make it go. Um, and you just, you know, you can turn and everything just by slight variations in the pressure you put on the front or the back. It has a pressurized front foot pad. And I started becoming obsessed with watching people ride these things. I don't know why. Um, I don't know how this became such a crazy thing for me, but I just, I, I became obsessive about it. I'd be rendering video or something and in the background I would have people just riding around in Chicago or New York or places. Um, it seems insanely fun and I want to try one very, very badly. Have any of you out there ever ridden one of these things? Um, how horribly dangerous are they? Uh, I'm not gonna get one because they're like, I think it's like $1,800 for the, the flagship model or something, but they just seem really cool and I wanna try one. I wanna see if I can find anyone nearby who has one so I can try it out. But I'm very curious, have any of you ever tried one? And one wheel, if you're watching, why don't you send one my way? Because you could, I could do a series on, can an ancient man ride a one wheel? An ancient, ancient man. Is it possible for someone as, as old as me to ride one of those things? I think it'd be fun. But yeah, it's, I know this is totally random, but it just, I've, I've quite enjoyed, there's just something very mesmerizing about watching a video of a dude in Chicago bombing around through traffic with like smooth jazz playing over the top of it. I don't know, it's just very strange. And he also had this camera, the Insta, what is it called? The Insta 360X or something, which basically takes 360 degree film or video of everything you're doing and then you can stitch it together and kind of pick out. It's pretty cool. It's not something that I'd ever really have any use for, but um, it's, it's amazing what technology can do these days, huh? But now for the main topic of this episode, this, don't get too excited yet because this isn't quite the breakthrough we've been looking for, but I got a little message from somebody, a very nice message sent to me to my P.O. box, it says this. Let me just read it out to you. Hello, Bradley. I just want to say that I am a massive fan. I came across your channel a few years ago while searching for an alternative to smoking. Seeing someone of a similar age enjoying a hobby that I personally did not know existed anymore was certainly an eye-opener, and I have not touched a smoke since. I am sure that all your subscribers are immensely grateful for the work you put into creating your videos. I shouldn't read all the nice stuff. But it's much appreciated. Uh, I certainly am, and hopefully you get to continue creating awesome content in the future. Thank you very much. As a thank you, I have sent you this tin of something. I know it is not much, but I hope you enjoy it, Mike. Thank you very much, Mike. 
It is much appreciated. Gang, this is it. I'm sure you know what it is by now. This is the Peterson branded Dunhill, well, it's not Dunhill anymore, but the Peterson branded Elizabethan mixture. I have it in my hand. Now, <laughs> I'm kind of of two minds about this because I was, I was planning on doing a big blowout video. When they were finally available in the US, I was going to purchase a lot of the blends, and of course I was gonna have a video just entirely on Elizabethan mixture. I was gonna maybe try to make it a little cinematic, get some sketch kind of stuff going on in there, and I really wanted to drill down onto whether or not this Elizabethan mixture was the same as the old Elizabethan mixture. I have no reason to think that it won't be, but I just wanted to make that confirmation video a big celebration, really, of the fact that these blends are gonna be available again in the US. They still haven't shown up on retailers' websites yet. I am pretty confident that they will soon. I now have a tin, and I'm wondering if I should make the video or if I should wait until they're available in the US. I think I'm not going to crack this tin yet. I think I am going to wait. I still very much appreciate Mike sending this to me. I think it's very, very generous and very, very cool. And it's just really neat to have this in my hand and to see that Peterson, the Peterson brand. I mean, it's basically, it's exactly the same. It just says Peterson instead of Dunhill. And uh, that's really cool. It, and it says original recipe, original recipe, original recipe, original recipe, original recipe, all over the front of the tin, just in case any of you were wondering. So just rest assured, I have a tin in my hands. If it seems like it's gonna be a lot longer until the American uh, stock comes in, I will probably do a video based on this tin. Otherwise, I'm gonna wait for the American stuff to come in and I will do a big blowout celebration video. But now, gang, it is time for hashtag Ask Stuff and Things. Remember, if you have a question for me and you would like me to answer it on the Sunday Stuff and Things, tweet at SAT Bradley with the hashtag Ask Stuff and Things, and I will do my best to answer you. Also, if you are a Patreon supporter, you can, answer, you can ask me questions on Patreon, and I will answer them as well. First, we have a question from Steinhelm. Steinhelm? At Steinhelm1. I... <coughs> Steinhelm did not cough in his message. He says, I have only one pipe and I smoke it about every other day. I can't afford another quality pipe right now and was wondering if I'm doing harm to the one I have and not rotating it. Thanks. Well, Steinhelm, it really depends on your pipe. Um, some pipes can hold up to a little more use than others and a little more frequency of use than others. A lot of the old timers back in the day would just carry two with them wherever they went. They would use one, and then for their next bowl, they'd use the other one. They'd let that one rest, and then they would use that one. They would just rotate them throughout the day. Um, I don't think you're gonna hurt your pipe too badly. I typically, this idea that you have to let it rest for a week, I don't think is necessarily the case. I think every pipe is different. Some get wetter than others. Some dry out more quickly than others. If you notice as you're using your pipe that it seems wet or that it seems to be getting acrid and like not tasting very good, then maybe you need to give it more of a rest. But if it still seems fine, go ahead. Next, we have a message from Chris Kahi, or Kohi, Kahi? I'm sorry, Chris, at Machin Guy. First, congratulations on your engagement. I'm very happy for you both. Thank you, Chris. My question is about the strength in quotation marks, of Nightcap. I remember being very amused by how you mocked people who talked in hushed tones about how it is the strongest blend on the market. Is that perception a result of the Perique? I'm really enjoying Perique as I enjoy more vapors, and then after trying anything like Brown Number 4 Twist, it seems like Perique could be used to mimic the mouthfeel of a truly strong blend. Thoughts, comments, snide remarks. Well, I don't know if it's, it's the Perique, um, in the nightcap that lends to the perception of strength. It is a very bold, full flavored blend. And I think sometimes people confuse flavor with strength. It's that weird kind of arbitrary distinction or maybe uh, not arbitrary, but just sort of not very pointed distinction we make between something being strong and something being flavorful. And I tend to separate the two and also I guess nicotine could figure into that as well. Nightcap to me is very bold. It has a lot going on. I mean, there is 
there's a lot of Latakia, there's Virginia, there's Perique, there's some Oriental in there as well. It's a bold blend. I don't think it's super, super strong. And perhaps the Perique has some something to do with that, but I don't, I don't tend to think, uh, there are plenty of vapors that have a pretty high Perique content that aren't necessarily what I would call a strong blend though. So I don't know, it depends. I, it's all based on your interpretation of what strength means, I guess, and whether or not you equate full flavor with strength. Next, I know that probably doesn't answer your question at all, but I'm sorry, thanks Chris. Uh, next from Jason Dubois. Uh, oh, this is just a Hotmail address. Oh yeah, this was a message, so I shouldn't read out his Hotmail address. Uh, hello Bradley, I hope it's okay to ask via YouTube as I don't tweet. My question is this, do you think there are varying degrees of quality when it comes to Latakia or is it all the same? It seems like you could possibly process any quality of leaf and get the same result. Uh, any insight on this? P.S. I love the channel and I'm enjoying Sherlock Holmes a lot. Thanks, Jason from Albuquerque. Thank you, Jason. Um, well, you know, I'm not an expert on where and how Latakia is made. I know that originally it was Latakia Syria, or Syria. Um, we're not really getting it from there anymore. For a while there were blends that had sort of uh, stocks put away of that Syrian Latakia. Now most of the Latakia we get is from Cyprus and it is produced in a specific place in a specific way. And I think that that is sort of the alchemy that makes the Latakia that we have taste like the Latakia we have. It is not only the process used in, in processing the leaf, it is also where it is grown. And there is just a particular soil uh, chemistry, weather, climate, everything goes into making a particular varietal and then how that is proce processed is probably 50% of it as well. So I don't think you could just take anything and use a similar process and have it taste like the Latakia that we mostly get from Cyprus. That's my opinion. Next, from Sergio at Sergio BTA Colonel or COL. I'm not sure what he intends there. Uh, three questions, accent Englishman. All right, let's use my highly accurate English accent here. Would you, <laughs> okay, I won't do that one. Um, would you create a closed group, <laughs> I can't do it. Uh, <clears throat> would you create a closed group on Facebook to share stuff and things? Uh, I hate Facebook and I never want to use Facebook ever again for anything. Uh, it's been, it's been pulling teeth to get me to have like an Instagram and a Twitter and that's probably as far as I'm gonna go. Um, are you planning to review Cabby's Mixture? Uh, I have reviewed Cabby's Mixture. I reviewed it right around when it came out. So if you search my reviews playlist on the channel, you should find that review. And three, are you going to try C&D Carolina Red Flank? Uh, maybe. I might, we'll see about that. And last, we have a question about Minecraft from Jason Hunt at Hexeter. He says, how long in real time did the bitter, uh, blah, bigger, better dig take you? Uh, it's actually called Bradley's Big Dig Mark II. Thank you very much, Jason. Also, did you get all those diamonds from the dig itself? My spawn is being chintzy. Hashtag ass stuff and things. Um, man, in actual real time, I don't know like like if I put a stopwatch on it, how many actual in-game hours it took, but it was weeks, um, weeks and weeks and weeks, a long time, a very long time, a depressingly kind of sadly, pathetically long time. Don't ever do anything like I've done. Learn from my mistakes. Um, and pretty much all those diamonds were from the Big Dig, yes. Uh, I had some from a, a mine initially, but I'd use most of those up making armors and weapons and things like that anyway. So yes, I think pretty much every diamond. But I also, I wouldn't harvest any diamond unless I had a looting three pickaxe. So that makes a big difference. For those of you who don't know anything about Minecraft, this probably sounds like the most insane conversation in the world, but you should watch the series on Stuff and Things Plays. It's fantastic. But now gang, Thank you all for your questions. They're much appreciated. Please send more in. Tweet at SAT Bradley with the hashtag Ask Stuff and Things. But now it's time for the very best part of the show, and that is when we thank our sponsors on Patreon. The people who support the channel at $25 or more a month get a special shout out every week on the Sunday Stuff and Things. 
If you would like to support the channel, there is a link in the description box below. There might also be a card at the end of the video, if that's actually working. It is patreon.com slash stuff and things, but don't feel obligated. This, these people did go ahead and support the channel, and now I would like to give them a special thank you. People like Glenn, Derek, Cody Stregla, Nathaniel Hills, Kirk Crompton, Private Eye, C.W. Piperman, Garrett, Ryan McFadden, Corbin Borbin, Adam Loveless, M.D. of the North, Robert Veneris, Ryan Stoffer, John M. Parrish, and Gus, a.k.a. I Love Gongs. Those are the $25 supporters. Thank you all so much. But now I would like to thank the maniacs, the crazy people, the ones who have absolutely no conception of the value of money, people like Peter Straub. Thank you so much, Peter, for being a maniac tier supporter. Also, Bob McGee. Thank you so much, Bob. What a good one. Gang, that is this week's Sunday Stuff and Things. Like I said, Lockbee Journal Review coming soon. Hopefully, Moment Lens stuff coming soon, as soon as I get the case. I still want to get out and do some vloggy stuff with my gimbal and everything, but the weather has been awful lately. Um, maybe a video on the new Peterson Elizabethan coming up soon. We're going to see how long it takes for the U.S. versions to come out. Uh, I just recorded some more Red-Headed League. Uh, the Sherlock Holmes stories for Arthur Conan Doyle, Stuff and Things Reads. That's coming up on Friday. Lots of videos, lots of stuff going on. I can hardly keep track, but thank you so much for continuing to watch, for supporting the channel, for subscribing, for sharing, for supporting on Patreon. It all means a lot to me. Thank you all very, very much. And until next time, until we meet again, I've been a good friend Bradley. You've been the audience. This has been Stuff and Things on a pleasant Sunday, Stuff and Things. I'll see you later.